So let's start creating our first custom behavior. Even better, let's start with the project for our custom template, which will contain our custom behavior. So for that, let's open uh, Unity Hub, and there let's create a new project. I will call it template example project, and it will be located here. So while Unity loads the project, I will take a quick look at our documentation. So you can do it as well by following developers.inactive.d slash documentation slash creator. It will get you to the latest version of the documentation. And here we can check our getting started guides. And uh, here we, we will have uh, instructions on how to uh, set up our project. So, yep. So we have our assets project, uh, our Unity project, and uh, what do we have to do now is to set uh, API compatibility level. To do so, uh, let's go to File, Build Settings. In the Build Settings, you will find Player Settings. In the Player Settings, in the Other Settings. Uh, view, we will find yep, API compatibility level and we will have to set it to .NET 4.x uh, As I record it uh, right now, uh, the current version of the inactive creator is 2.2 and you still have to do it, but in the next minor version, 2.3 point something, you wouldn't have to do it uh, we will support uh, the .NET 2.0 as well. So, uh, now we can close this window. And uh, save the project. So, uh, the changes to the project settings that we have just made uh, would uh, uh, would be saved as well. So now we have to do uh, we have to import uh, uh, inactive creator and uh, some of the default components uh, which we could use with our template. So to do so, let's open the assets folder uh, in the explorer and here let's open git bash. So with git it's very easy to initialize a repository. It will be a repository for our uh, template. So we just type git in it. And we have an empty repo. So now let's get back to the developer documentation. And uh, in the developer section, in the setup project, you will find the list of uh, git commands to add submodules uh, uh, into your uh, git repo, into your project. Alternatively, you could go to github slash inactive slash creator. And here in the readme file, you will find exactly the same list of the commands. So first one is uh, creator itself. We refer to this package as a core package. So just paste. It will start cloning. And at some point it will be done. So let's talk about what the rest of the git submodels uh, would do. So all of them are components uh, of the creator and each component provides you with a certain functionality. So for example if you will import text-to-speech component uh, in your template, uh, when your design, uh, designers will use your template, they will have access to text-to-speech uh, 
audio behaviors, which will play uh, some uh, generated audio files. And also it will uh, provide all the infra infrastructure behind it, so it would actually work on the different pl pl uh, platforms. Right now we support, uh, I believe, uh, uh, Microsoft text-to-speech and Android uh, text-to-speech, but also you can implement your own in your template. Uh, I mean your own integration to any other engine that you want. So the next one is basic conditions and behaviors. It's uh, basically just a bunch of something well, very basic, so like move object from point uh, to point. It uh, inc includes uh, anything that you could do even without VR. So you can move transform around the scene, right? You can put something in the collider. The next one is a little bit more in interesting. It's the basic interaction components. So on its own, it does nothing, but uh, it provides interfaces for uh, uh, other uh, in interaction components. So you could, uh, in this case, we will empower 20 XR interaction component, and uh, in the XR interaction component, there is implementation of the uh, previous components interfaces. Uh, and uh, due to that, uh, our training designers will have uh, behaviors and conditions which will uh, allow some interaction between trainee and the application. And uh, also, of course, uh, all the necessary logic behind it. So if you want to make a VR project, yeah, probably that's the way to go. So now let's import text-to-speech. Again, paste. Should be fairly fast. Yep, the next one is basic conditions and behaviors. Done. Uh, basic interaction. And XR interaction. Paste. So let's check our Unity project. What do we have here? So it takes some time to import, but it's fairly fast. Like before, I think it was in the earliest versions, it was 100 uh, more heavier than. Uh, more heavy than it is right now, uh, so it would take a fair amount of time to import it. But here, yeah, I think it's it was uh, around a minute, maybe. So I think we made uh, good progress in that regard. So yeah, still importing. Yep, here we go. So let's check what do we have here. Uh, under the inactive, uh, in the creator folder, we got our core, we, ga we got our components. Yep, uh, XR interaction component just imported. So, and now if we set the scene. Right now it's uh, just a random scene that uh, Unity creates when you create a new project. So, set up training scene. What do we got here? Uh, yeah, just a default runtime configuration. No uh, courses are yet created. So let's create one. I will call it test. And let's check what kind of behaviors and conditions that we already have. So yeah, we get our audio behaviors, we get uh, delay, disable, enable object, highlight object, move object, and for conditions, 
Hmm. Yeah, a lot of uh, objects that are related to uh, VR interactions. So yeah, all of this we got simply by importing something that we already have. And now let's create a custom behavior. It's a bit unresponsive. Yep. So yeah, let's create another folder. What is this one? Okay. Uh, normally you would uh, call it uh, by your company name. I will call it my company. And inside of this folder, you can create a template folder. So let's make a folder for behaviors. The structure of the project is up to you, but uh, I find it's more convenient than everything in its own place. And here, let's create a new C -sharp script. And let's call it a uh, scale behavior because that's what we will be doing right now. So, scale behavior. Uh, hit enter again, and Unity will open it in the uh, ID of your choice. In my case, it will be JetBands Rider. So we, know, we don't need the pre-generated code because a scale behavior is not a mono behavior. Yeah, a bit confusing, but again, there are Unity behaviors, which are basically scripts attached to the game objects. And there are creator behaviors, which are, well, entities of the training course, which are part of the step. And uh, uh, when you enter the step, you kick off uh, all the behaviors of it. So, uh huh. new public class scale behavior and let's inherit it from native creator hmm. Oh yeah, it takes some time for Rider to initialize, so that's why I don't receive... Uh, oh, uh, auto-completion suggestions right now. Uh, so, since I don't quite remember how to do it, let's take a look at some of the decent behaviors, so more fabric behavior. Uh -huh. Yep, so we have to inherit from behavior class which is a generic class and uh, its uh, generic uh, parameter has to be the class of our behavior data. So let's uh, remember the previous lesson, right? Uh, we have our entities and behaviors are entities and uh, every entity has a lifecycle data and processes. So lifecycle uh, it's very simple, it's already implemented in the behavior base class, so we don't have to do anything there, uh, except from inheriting, of course. Then we have to implement uh, data and we have to implement our process. That's what we will do right now. So for data, yes. Uh, for that, let's create a nested class and call it 
entity data and inherit it from iBehavior data. Okay. And now we can define the generic parameter of uh, our parent class, which will be scale behavior entity data. Now we get some uh, compiler, compiler errors because we don't implement anything in the entity data. Uh, despite that we have inherited from the interface, implemented the interface. So let's hit implement missing uh, members. So all you have to do is to make two properties with default uh, getter and setter and keep them public and uh, the creator will uh, figure out the rest by himself. So Yep, we have our metadata, which is used uh, internally. We have our name, uh, which is uh, the displayed name, I believe. Oh yeah, in the step inspector, if you uh, open uh, a step, uh, you can remain uh, the name any of the behaviors and uh, it will change this property value. That's what it does. So if what if we want to scale behavior? What kind of... Uh, values would we need? Yes, uh, first of all, we would need uh, to know which objects uh, we want to scale, so uh, let's create a new property of the type training objects now, scene objects reference so the important thing about uh, implementing your data, you should never reference scene objects or scene object properties directly. Uh, you should always use uh, scene object reference or scene property reference. So we have our scene object reference of the type uh, of this type, and we name it targets get set. And also, we would need uh, target scale. So, maybe not target, but target object. Yep. And just vector free as a target scale. So what I did here, I assign a default value to this property. So whenever we will create a new behavior, it will set the target scale to one by default. I guess it will be a little bit more simpler for the user. So let's check our Unity project. So, if we open the course in the work, uh, workflow editor and then open step, open step, yeah, in the behaviors, nah, we won't find it in the list of uh, available behaviors because we forgot to create a menu item. So to create a menu item, we have to create a editor script. So in Unity, all scripts they are split in uh, two different kinds. One of them, you have access to them in your application, and for the other half, you have access to them during the editor time. So they execute something in the editor, but uh, when you compile the applications, the, they are no more there. So let's create an editor script, and to do that, uh, let's create a new folder and call it editor. 
and here we can create a new C sharp script and let's call it scale behavior menu item and let's open it in the editor so again we don't need any of this what do we need is to inherit it from the menu item uh, class and uh, as a generic parameter we have to use i behavior interface so now we have to implement missing numbers so get new item whenever you click uh, uh, the uh, at the behavior button in the unity editor you will invoke this method and this method will return a new instance of the behavior uh, that will be added to the step so last return new scale behavior uh, good and for display name just return some string uh, so in this case it will be my company scale objects so if you use forward slashes it will create a subject directory in the in the drop down menu so uh, let's open unity again and let it compile and then open course in the workflow editor and add behavior and here, uh, here we have my company scale object and it doesn't look quite right Right. Uh, it doesn't look quite right because uh, uh, we have to make it serializable. So first of all, our scale behavior uh, class has to have data contract attributes uh, on its own. So it would uh, pass the serialization to its data, and in the data there are values that we are actually want to serialize and to serialize them we have to mark them as data member so let's mark target object as data member and target scale as data member you don't have to do anything via, you don't have to mark uh, metadata and name you could but it's already done in the interface definition so if we open this view again and let it recompile it should work hmm. so let's delete create new step Nope. So what happens? All right, and we don't support nodes. We have to explicitly state that the default uh, value of the target object property is a new scene object reference. That confused me a bit, so it might confuse it uh, you as well. So it's good that I had this confusion.
<laughs> so it should get better now and And it still doesn't work. So it fails on the unique name reference drawer here. Right. Uh, so in the scale behavior, this video started so well. <laughs> 